we'll go from here. I'll wait till it pops up on this end. Hopefully everybody is doing okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just waiting for it to show up on my side over We're here. Good. Yeah. Go on, everyone. Hopefully everybody is doing fine. Uh, we're going to hear a double sound in just a second. I'm almost sure of it. Yep, here it comes right now. I think I got it before it happened. So hopefully it sounds working. Hopefully everything is late. We are a minute or two late. Um, just chatting for a minute. Time kind of flies away. Uh, of course, if you are locked into your, your work all the time and don't take any time to talk out, things get kind of hectic. Um, I got Dom next to me here. We'll let him shoot out in just a second here. I just wanted to announce just a couple of things for those in Patreon. I had a bunch of questions on self-similar through Inkfrog. Video is up right now. I, I go into a few other aspects. Auto relister and ending uh, your good till canceled ahead of time. So you're not going to have to pay fees if you want through Inkfrog. Um, so the whole video is Inkfrog for those who had that question. If you haven't done Inkfrog and you are interested for those in Patreon, um, I would recommend looking at it because it, I, I'll show you comparisons between my store and Inkfrog, as well as how you can match up to make sure everything's syncing from one platform, Inkfrog, to the other. Shopify is the next set of strings you'll see up after that. But um, <clears throat> Video tomorrow I'll have up here, some other things in the works. Um, and I'm going to pop it over to Dom here. We're going to shoot out some numbers, financials from eBay's fourth quarter as well as this quarter. Not going to hammer eBay, but I want everybody to be aware of what's going on because I think it's honestly and sincerely important. Oh, what, one more thing. I had three people now, and I didn't. I thought it was just some oddball thing, but I did put a call out in, in a couple places that I talk. If you have a top-rated plus status and you're under managed payments, you should go back in and double-check to make sure that you are actually getting your 10% discount and final value fees because apparently there's some glitch going on now where some folks have not gotten their 10% uh, top rated plus uh, uh, final value fee credit since they've been in managed payment. We're talking like a year and a half or something. So they didn't catch it till now. It's something in the works apparently. So if you've got it, I would honestly recommend you go back and look at some of your invoices, at least the current one, one from five or six months ago, and then one from right after you got on managed payments. Make sure that you're not getting gypped. You may miss it. And if it shows up and you've got it missing for a year and a half, it might be a good chunk of change when you could use it the most. So I'm going to hop it over here to Dom. I think most people know who he is. If I didn't put a link in the description box, I don't honestly remember if I did. I will pop one in as soon as the video is done. So you have a link straight to Dom's. You can also hit the three buttons. I'll let him take it over from here and introduce yourself and do your usual thing there, Dom. All right, no problem. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Don, for being flexible. As you know, last week I had a, a bail the same day we planned to go live together. And uh, even tonight you pushed your show ahead an hour uh, for me. Just my schedule's been crazy lately. So I do, as you would say, honestly and sincerely appreciate uh, the flexibility. It's uh, very nice of you to do that for me. Oh, no, no. You never have to say anything about that. That's just <laughs> a given. If we got to do something, change it or move yeah. it up, I'm full, yeah. fully game for you there. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, yeah. So as my name uh, suggests, I love to hunt for treasure and uh, I love to go all sorts of places. I love to go to state sales, garage sales, uh, rummage sales, flea markets, private picks, all sorts of things. Uh, so the videos I put out on my channel uh, focus on that. Uh, they also focused on uh, all sorts of tips and things to look for, to hunt for, uh, ways to find uh, hidden treasures and stuff when you're outsourcing. Uh, so do some what's sold videos as well. Uh, I introduced a news, a weekly news recap video this, this year on my channel, which people are uh, enjoying. And then all sorts of uh, uh, different types of live shows uh, where I have different guests on and stuff. And we have like competitions and things and selling events. And it's a lot of fun. So uh, we just had one last night. And, um, you know, and Don and I do a show together once a month and we rotate on the uh, channels. I also run a, a Facebook group called the Reselling Resource Center, and we're just about getting close to 30,000 members in there. So um, I spend a lot of time managing that as well. So I do a lot of stuff with social media and I'm also on Instagram. So uh, and anyway, so oh, and my my reselling is uh, part time, but feels like full time. <laughs> it's a lot of work, I should say. And you know yeah. that as, as much as anybody else. <laughs> That brings up just a good topic for just a second here. I have a lot of people that um, do this part time, even with the I did the survey with Ina e-commerce bites um, results out. If you haven't seen it, she's got three sections of it. But 
with um, part timers. That's like half the people that apparently are out there these days, at least the ones that I interact or or have read, you know, articles and stuff on their platform. Half the people are part time. Now, that says to me one thing that people need the, the revenue. You can't just make enough from one one job. When me and my wife used to work, you know, at, at Disney and places like that, it was took two of us and we didn't make as much as we do now just on eBay. So, I mean, you know, I understand that aspect, but um, we're going to shoot off some numbers, numbers for just a minute. If you haven't seen eBay's total numbers. Now, this is the one that I think is one of the biggest, most important ones. Me and Don were just talking about this. Um, again, this isn't a bash eBay, but you should know what's going on. I think that's truly important. One billion dollars of eBay's revenue last year was from just promoted listings. And the year before, they did $10.27 billion in revenue. So that's like one tenth of the revenue is coming from promoted listings. So not only that, it's a it's close to a half of their revenue jump because their revenue jump was 2.6 billion so not quite half but fourth quarter yeah 2.61 yeah is um is is coming from promoted listings <clears throat> that should <laughs> that should bother everyone a little bit because it's basically them increasing the fees but through a means where they can say they're not increasing the fees you don't have to do promoted listings i don't do promoted listings at all but in some categories, especially those who sell clothing, I would say it's a given that you have to. We did it. I, I did some promoted when we were in clothing and we did clothing. I did free shipping a lot in clothing too, because you have to be competitive. Um, I don't, you, you don't sell much clothing. I know you sell some because I've seen some of your, you know, yep. seen some that you have acquired. I do hats and a few other things. Yep. Uh, would you say your sales and clothing for you personally are steady? stagnant down i mean clothes are usually long you know long tail items for the most part and i would say that hasn't changed i think what i'm more concerned about going forwards with the new types of promoted listings that are out there because yeah. there's promoted listing listings advanced for example and the new promoted listings uh, beta that they have out there so uh is the more and more they keep introducing these types of promoted listings how much more difficult is it going to be if you're not using it to get your listing seen, which gets to your point is it's technically optional, but you know, Required. if you don't do it, are you just going to be sitting around and, you know, having more of a difficulty over time you know, getting sales compared to the past? I'm, I'm concerned that, that, that there might be a trend going in that direction, but you know, we're going to have to monitor it. Well, well, piggybacking off of that, they're down 10% um, gross merchandise volume for the year. So 10% less merchandise is selling across the board on the platform, which, again, isn't good when, you know, overall people are seeing less sales is, is the gist of what most people tell me. Um, Seller-wise, they, they've lost... What, 30 million? Well, let's look at buyers. Wait, 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 hold on. Before you get to that, I just want to say one other point, okay? Because I think this this goes right to what you were just saying, okay? So revenue up $2.6 billion. So that's 5% increase. That's what they're Only celebrating. Only for fourth quarter, though. Only for fourth quarter. Right. Yes. Six cents per share. Six cents right. per share. Right. Now, by the way, every news outlet, independent news outlet that covered their earnings call, it was negative headlines. For everybody, except there was a couple headlines that came out that were positive. eBay headlines, but they right. But when you go and you look, it actually was there was the same cookie cutter article based off of eBay's press release, which what they were touting was that the revenue went up. But so you, if you initially hear that, and you the average person hears, well, the revenue went up, you might say to yourself, well, that's great. They, you know, the revenue went up, and that must be because. There's a lot more people making sales on eBay, but turns out that the uh, gross merchandising volume is down like twenty point seven billion dollars. <laughs> like it's crazy. So how could that be, right? How could it be that the gross merchandising values uh, volume has gone down that much, but the uh, revenue has gone up? Well, prom that's where promoted listings comes in, for example, as a big uh, part of that explanation. Managed payments is the other part of that yep. explanation. Buy it, and they're still going to buy back 
or four billion dollars more in stocks of their own stock to increase the pocket share of their own own folks. So basically, the the only way eBay is making money is by finding new ways to get money from us. That that's it. That that's that's the gist of what their their psychology and thoughts are on what to do about stagnant uh, increase. Again, they've lost. In fact, let me let me hop over to one screen here because I'll give it to the numbers. They lost since the January of 2020, January, February, March, first quarter, they lost basically 30 million buyers left the site in the last two years. They went up. They went up. They, in, in January, February, March of 2020, they were 174 million. And I'm looking directly at the numbers here. Uh, users, active users. It went up. In uh, January of 2021, pandemic, it went up to 187 million. Not great, but now it's right now as a fourth quarter, and that's without losing the people that we've lost in the last two months. They've lost, it's now down to 147 million buyers. So basically 30 million buyers went bye-bye off of eBay. Those are scary numbers. The stocks plummeted, what, what do we say, about 20% just since January 1st. That's now, not, the, what was the buyer number in January? Did you say 174? Yeah, hang on. I got it right here. Uh, January, February, uh, well, fourth quarter, fourth quarter. We don't have January's numbers. We won't have them till the whole quarter's done. So March, April 20th or so, we'll have numbers for the amount of buyers. But as of December 31st, they had 147 right. million. Right. No, I, I'm talking about 2020. 2020, it was 174, but it was up to 187 on its peak right. in January of 2021. So they were still gaining. And then quarter two, boom. And ever since then, it's been on a downward. Every single quarter they've lost since since the end of 2021. Every okay. single quarter, all year last year. Because the question that's come up when this has been, uh, when these quarterly uh, earnings reports have been raised and there's been decreases is, well, how much of this is due to the you know pandemic is getting better and you know more you know since so people are starting to go back to you know their regular jobs people are starting to stop are not buying as much online as they used to like compared to the beginning but this sounds like the buyers have actually gone down compared to pre-pandemic yeah that's the whole point i, I don't yeah. have a chart i wanted to get one but if, if you go back farther it's going to be like the pandemic never happened in a very, very short time, and they'll be back on the trend. The, unfortunately, this is what I've been saying is going to happen, and far too many people think I'm just, you know, trying to get on eBay all the time, but the numbers don't lie. They don't lie. If you go back another year or two, you're going to see where the progression was. The only reason eBay had 174,000 people, uh, buyers on the site at that point in 2021, right when the pandemic started, was because of the pandemic. Yeah. If it wasn't for and again, it's not luck, but they got lucky in this aspect. And it's the only reason if, if you have that new revenue, that new stream of folks coming in, your goal is to keep it at all costs. And that means doing anything you can to bring them in commercials and deals and discounts and, and lowering fees to bring more people to the site. I was really surprised to see that so many people are on Facebook in all honesty. It was a huge difference. Well, yeah, I think, I think that the Facebook has Facebook marketplace has helped uh, cut into it. Uh, if you had a business account on uh, Facebook marketplace, there were literally no fees. Yeah. So if you were sold something for $200, you literally were getting $200. I think there's a limit, though, on how high of a dollar you can sell or amount or something someone told me. I haven't done any Facebook. Yeah, I don't know what the dollar amount limit was, but they, they also were covering the shipping as well. So, I mean, that you know, that was smart. I mean, they had a good promotion going on with that. They were cutting into it. Uh, also, and I talked about this on my recent uh, news recap, is that one of the trends that I see happening more and more is that I think people are starting to, to, to move more towards trying to get closer to a like, direct to consumer model as much as possible and i think with the, the increased popularity of things like youtube auctions and instagram accounts and now the the whatnot app is very popular uh, where people are just going on and they're just directly interfacing with consumers and selling them stuff and this is just all end end roads around having an interface through uh you know th through ebay now yeah with whatnot they're taking a percentage as well but it's it's more direct person to, 
to person like a live interaction kind of thing is is going on uh and sometimes they're total end rounds around uh, ebay depending on the platform that you're uh, uh using uh, like if you have a youtube channel and you're just doing a direct sale the only fee you're going to have to pay is through the payment processor okay, yeah 2.9 or 3.45 and then 30 cents or whichever whoever right. you're using so right. right we just like three or four you can use we've got a couple different accounts so i think more and more people are gonna are gonna do that i mean we're, we'll we'll talk about like solutions and things to do to, to work around because we don't want everyone to think oh just you know just give up and that kind of thing but um you know there is at a certain point it, it, it gets to there's just so much you could keep chipping away in terms of fees that sellers have to pay before it becomes too much that it's not viable so you've got to find ways to to make it viable uh for yourself and if it's not then you got to start thinking of other ideas other you know other approaches so well there are other approaches to raise the fees and figure another way to nickel and time everybody unfortunately is, is what i see now i i was surprised that from what I see, a decline in the amount of sellers, and again, I, I'm sure somebody's going to throw some nastiness on, on me saying this, but I've looked and I've talked to a lot of people. I wanted to see what's going on personally with the clothing aspect of it, because I got a lot of people telling me that their, their sales are slow. Every store I've looked at had a majority of clothing that had slower sales. We went to the mall, me and the wife, and we stopped by a couple other stores outside that are just clothing sellers. I went to I don't know, 12, 14 different stores, major national stores. I can buy clothing new on and off of a shelf right now at the mall or any of the clothing stores just in my local area, cheaper than I could probably get them used on eBay. And price it out yourself. Everybody has a clearance because there's a year and a half of backlog on stuff that was still on a boat that they couldn't transport to the stores. No one was coming into the store. So the, 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 Brick and mortar is a wash with discounts. I mean, a wash. Even even my Walmart, and I haven't been to Walmart and looked at their discount shelves in a while, but I did it in January and we did it did it a week or so ago too. Again, they're washed with stuff that apparently didn't make it to the store. Now they've got to blow it out the minute it almost gets into the store to wash the stuff out to get some revenue coming back. So I think that's that's where some of the issues are going. I don't know if you get out at all and do stuff like that, but I we wanted to do some prices. I had to buy some some pants for one of the kids and stuff so I, we were out i wanted to get a couple of shirts and i, I was joking last night that mrs primetime uh dra dragged me out uh last weekend to uh get some new clothes <laughs> i source when i'm at the mall we we got we made some decent money on sourcing items though because there is so much clearance lunchbox is one of the places i always hit up if you know what that is no, the only lunchbox I know of are the ones that you put food in. <laughs> no, no, they sell like anime and Disney Tide and and just all kinds of stuff there. I don't know. It's like a I don't know what you'd call the store, but it's called Lunchbox. They've got like lunchbox action figures. They've got like box sets you can buy, and they got like a a gift box and like a, a service. It's it's a huge chain. I don't know. You probably have one up by you, and you probably don't know it. Uh, I've seen them all the way down. Possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't. I only know it because we. I bought a whole bunch of Nightmare Before Christmas stuff there, and we sold every single one of them. At, and it was like twenty-five cents in the dollar at the store after Christmas sale. But anyway, <laughs> that that was my experience. So at the mall is that the clothing right now, household goods. Oh my gosh, the towels, even stuff that normally would be higher priced. I know inflation they're talking about, but the stores have so much stuff in there and to get the people back into the stores, the sales are incredibly huge. So I think some of the Amazon's reporting first quarter going to be down too. If you saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's not, although uh, the S and P is actually only down 11% eBay's down what 18.9 or something. So eBay's like really part pretty much down on, on their numbers you'd expect them to be up considering that, you know, Amazon's still doing record numbers, but they, they are projecting a little lower number, but anyway, that's, that's my conclusion on at least the clothing aspect of it. Box. No, no, let's watch our language on there. <laughs> I'm sure it's called lunchbox. I, I don't have anything left. I've sold everything from there, but in fact, they had some, my little ponies. We made a lot of money on too. So uh... for those who are a, that's a good item there. Yeah, that, that, absolutely, for sure. I, I mean, for that that's going to increase the popularity of uh, people doing retail arbitrage. And as you know, there's a whole big segment of that 
uh, in reselling. Plus, on on YouTube, channels purely just dedicated to doing that. So, yeah, I I don't I, I don't do too many videos on it because usually and I was just talking this with somebody else. People say, well, why don't you talk about the the RA and, and stuff? By the time if I talk about the RA items before I've went to every store and got all the stuff I want, they'll be gone before I ever get there, and I won't make any money off it. So. If you're going to talk about RA items in general, you can't do it until after the fact. Otherwise, you might as well not do it yourself. Um, so I know people people talk about RA on there. Usually, again, it's at the end of their run or they've hit every store that's out there in their region. And that's that's what most people do with RA stuff. A lot of money to be made. but Hey, Don, I wanted to bring up a good point that was made in the chat here. So uh, Tommy was mentioning that if they you know as they're rolling out those this whole guaranteed payments thing you know where best offers or offers will automatically be turn uh, that right uh, off as soon as like i know i know he did but i'm saying as they unroll because it's automatically going to be on by default so yeah which is a of, stupid a lot of people won't know so but, but as they do that um well do you think that's going to cause a decrease in the um gross merchandising volume over time? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. At least in the vintage and stuff, in my opinion. Um, I know there's a lot of other channels uh, that people point out. Well, they, they've been asking for this option. They've been asking for it. I let people, everybody in my store has seven days to pay. And I've, I never have issues. If I have one here or one there, I don't, I don't care. It's not a big ordeal. I work with people every single day of, of my life. We do deals, like whatever it takes to get those people in the door. Uh, if you start off not trusting them from the very minute they're, I mean, you're, you're already killing it. Maybe you have one thing that they want, but they'll say, well, next time I'm going to go to somebody who isn't going to require it. The only aspect though, on, on them doing it, not, not having it off to begin with is so many people won't have a clue that it's even an option. That's my opinion. Cause most people right. don't read the updates or the user right. agreements. Right. And stuff. Plus they put it in a weird place. But yeah, it's in a weird place. It's what under blocked buyers is where it is to turn right. that off. And that's an intentional, in my opinion. So if they, I don't know, I, I, I don't like the whole process itself. Maybe if you sell clothing or something, maybe it'd be great. I don't know. But for me, man, I work with people constantly. They'll shop because I've got so many items in certain categories. They'll shop over a two, three day time frame just to get enough time to look over everything. You can't look over 10,000, 20,000 items in a category in, in an hour and expect it, you know, just throw it in your cart and all that stuff. Half the time, my cart doesn't work. It, it, I used to do, you know, five, 10 cents or to a quarter extra per item, and it never calculates right. The weight's always off when I come to the the um, bulk shipping. So if I'm going to bulk ship it, it's going to be off. And if the weight's off, what it does sometimes too, it, it multiplies or adds the dimensions up. So when I get to the bulk and I'm combining like five different purchases to the same order in a bulk sheet, right. It, right. it'll have a dimension that's over the actual limits for the service that they selected. And there's no way to fix it without backing the entire bulk shipping orders out. So I can't ship anything. So I have to back out of all the bulk shipping, highlight them all again, and then go back in again and hope it doesn't do it the second time. That it's, it's just, it, it, it doesn't work right. So the best way for us and the best way I find with the people who buy from me routinely, they just buy it and they don't pay. So they can always just, hey, I'm done. Hey, I'm done. A, a day does not go by, and I, I swear this is the truth, where I don't do multiple purchases to the same person. I, I can't find a single solitary day for a year and a half or two years where every single day since that point, I'm not doing multiple, multiple purchases. And in many, many cases, there might be three or four people buying four, five, six, eight, ten items at a time. And it, it's just not doable to have to worry about i know they're going to give you the refund percentage back and all that crap but it's a nuisance for your buyers because then you've got four different refunds all tied to the same listing because each one's different and all this other crap it just it, it's not good for your buyers to when they're going through their their if again if they're paying from a bank or a charge card it's going to show four different lines on there and for to them if it shows up in one package i'm like well, i only bought one package i've already had that happen I, again, just like eBay sending out the notices that they do. I got a big issue. and Somebody was upset with me yesterday over. I'll talk about that later. I don't want to go rambling. I go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. No, I, I mean, I think it depends on how you have your business set up. Like the way you have it set up, it does sound like it would be, you know, or definitely, you know, could be a pain in the neck for, for, for buyers. Um, people you know, are in this to have, let me just say one, people are in this to have fun. And if they automatically got to pull out a card every single time, they're going to do it. And 
that is a good point. I mean, I, I am curious how much that's going to affect people's behavior on the site. If people will be less likely to put in offers because they, you know, there is that guarantee that their card will be charged. So, I, I mean, I, I think that it probably just knowing human psychology, that it should probably decrease the amount of offers overall that 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 people are are, are getting look at the how, buyer boards go how, look at the buyer right. boards how much i don't know however i will say i will say especially for when i sell my high price comic books you know hundred dollar multi, multi multiple hundred dollar comic books or thousand dollar plus comic books and normally most people pay but like just the other day i had a single highest graded bruce lee uh comic magazine I that's sold that. for four hundred dollars um but the guy never paid and the guy had a it, he had like a solid reputation there were no negatives everything looked good he wouldn't respond to invoices wouldn't respond to you know just communicate nothing and um you know ebay did the automatic cancellation after four days but it's, it's got that set up here the problem that the problem i have with that and this is why i do like that at least being there as an option is because i had six watchers on that thing and that guy doing that just basically knocked off my you know, all my watchers. Now, sure, they might see that it's back on and some of them might come back and that kind of thing. But it, that kind of thing is frustrating, especially when you're, you know, and I also gave the guy like a little bit of a deal too, like that kind of thing. So that those kind of, if it could help prevent those types of situations for me with those types of items, I would be happy about that. But again, I do see there's another side to it as well. Well, well like with, I don't do auto cancel on any of them. That's turned off on me too. But with, with like, um, <laughs> those cases it was where travis, by the way i mean <laughs> it was travis he he's the one who bought the bruce lee i'm just kidding he's messing around <laughs> i don't think he would do that to you no. travis seems like a real nice guy um with with like um the one case where someone may not pay i weigh it out to maybe i might have one where someone might not pay in a six month time frame but i may have missed a hundred people that just didn't want to mess with putting and getting their card out just to do it like if I'm if I'm in another room and the kids or somebody want to watch something and I log into to um, I don't know YouTube or wherever we're at and it gives me the code to go get your phone and you got to go get the phone because it's a new login and all that crap yeah. I hate it I don't want to do right. that and if I've got to get a card out of my pocket and Good point so I, I I'm I look at it just like with the insurance that you get for free with like uh, some of the the international eBay's international first class shipping and stuff. If if you have to pay out or eBay has to pay out, you're not going to get all your money back because there's fees and, and crap like that. So it, overall, in the long run, I come out far ahead eating the cost on one versus all the other ones that that were just fine. So I, I think of it that way, like with with the people that will just bypass it. There might be more that would bypass the listing than you would be forcing to pay in, in yeah. advance. That's yeah. the only thing that I look at it because man, I've been doing this for, and this isn't to brag. I've been doing this for, geez, 27, 28 years. And, and if it's, you get a reputation, you're in a niche or something, you've got a lot of stuff. They don't want you to block them because there's no other place to get certain things. If you've, again, I, I've had people not pay. So don't get me wrong. It, it does happen. But in niches, I find that there's far less people ever, 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 that that won't pay than there are in like clothing and household goods they can get those anywhere it's limited when it comes to a market like like the the vintage and antiques in my book and that's from my personal experience i can tell you too for sure me working with people and not forcing them to pay and all this other stuff and giving them seven days and and whatever and sometimes it's even longer i've got people there's quite a few now that pay at the end of the month they'll shop all month long and pay me at the end of the month ebay's limit is 30 days so you have to have them pay within 30 days but the only reason they're coming back to me is because I do that. They can budget their entire entire month out on what they're going to buy and stuff. I've got people and right. now there's like four that all they buy is religious cards. I always give them a good deal. $24 card. I might let them have for eight bucks, eight fifty, nine fifty, or something. Right. They're right. back all the time because they can combine it. They know if, Hey, can you, can you wait till here? Can you do this? I don't care. I'm a flea market guy. The old flea market guys, most of the guys that I deal with flea markets, if I didn't have the funds, I could just pay them next time. I don't do that, but I mean, that's the type of business that you build a rapport with your buyers and, and they're going to come to you over anybody else, especially the ones that have a block before you can even put a place a bit in, you know, I don't see right. it as someone, I don't see them as being bad before they ever put the offer in. And if you're going to force them to do that, that's saying that you don't trust them to begin with. And 
that's where you lose the the aspect. I'm old school, man, and I I liked the the haggling and the you know yeah pay me next week that's fine I see you every week and blah blah blah. And 99.999 percent of the people do the right thing. At least that's my personal experience. Yeah, I think I think mo my experience too is most of them pay. Most of them pay, but you get those. I get those ones every once in a while where they don't like the Bruce Lee example. And when it happens, it's just, it's one of those things. Again, it's psychological partly is that you pay more attention to the, to the instances that go wrong as opposed to the instances that go right. And then the ones that go wrong like that, they just drive you crazy. Uh, and that's when you're yelling, I wish they had some way that they guarantee would pay for the, uh, for the, for the item. So, I mean, I think partly too, it does depend on business model, like you're saying, for what you're, you're, what you know, you're for, for your business model too. And I try to be careful about that. And I think we do have to be careful about that on, on YouTube um, with, you know, because we have people watching us who are small sellers. They're just starting out. They might have a hundred items in their store. And so, you know, they, a different approach might work better for them, for example. So we always try to add that caveat. <laughs> Uh, to people to make sure to understand that that um, you know every every store has a different need right. a different function a, a different way to do it some work fairly universal like I'd say um, ending and sell similar works on oh yeah five percent yeah. or better of everybody yeah. I've ever talked to yeah I mean some but that's that's more built in from like eBay's logarithm or or their their search uh, their new search terms that's more what that affects on it too so. You know, you do this long enough, you can you can hopefully get the patterns out and figure out what works best for you personally. I mean, what I do, Dom Dom does different things. He's he does the the auto uh, cancel. You do the the immediate payments. Do you not do immediate payments since you just said? Uh, no, I actually I don't I don't do immediate payment required on my item. So I let I mean that's actually why I wind up in these situations sometimes that I don't have that on. So well, did, well, well okay, let, I'm there's two different whether you have immediate payments on or do you do you have the best offer part on? Do you have either one of those? Because I I don't I know I best are, offer. I have best offer. Uh, for most of my items I have best offer. There's some that I have that I no, just but do you have do you have the best offer force them to, to immediate pay though? Because there's two immediate pay options. One immediate's for everybody who who buys something and the other one is just for those that put in the best offer uh no it's a, i don't have i know i don't have that on there um i have you know what i mean right for you're because saying you always you could always before they added the best offer you have to put your charge card number before you place it they've always had the option where you could turn it on where immediate payment is always required and everything that they're directly purchasing without a best offer you know what i mean Right, right, right. Yeah, no, I don't have that. No, oh, I'm just curious. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't use either of that. And I figured the best offer to me is the same thing as forcing the immediate payment on everything. It's the same basic principle, is my personal opinion. That's why if I'm not going to do one, I'm not going to do the other. Right. Well, it's. I mean, the reason I haven't had that on is is partly due to what you were saying earlier, where I'm okay if someone needs, you know, let's say they're because I've had this happen sometimes. Someone wants to buy something on a Thursday, they don't want to lose it. They're getting their paycheck on a Friday. They want to pay the next day. I'm okay with waiting within, you know, that that window. Um, but they should you know, they should email you first to say, hey, do you mind me waiting till such and such? I would hope that would be nice. But but again, if it's within, if it's the next day or something, or if it's, you know, then no matter what I would say anyway, it wouldn't matter because it's still within the range with you know in which eBay tells them that they have to pay for the item within you know. 48 hours now technically it's four days i mean they get a message that when that's a lot of things people don't know is that they're getting a message that tells them they have four days to pay that's what you got to set pay. that up though too you can set up those messages to come out i know a lot of people aren't aware of that but you can set them up so it sends out notices it's a it's a radio button too yeah i don't know if it's on automatically i don't know maybe it is maybe it isn't i haven't touched you know i put ours on and it's been on i guess but I, we do do that. We do do that. Um, let, let me just, I want to bring up, let's bring up one quick thing here. eBay sends out notices since you're talking about notices. eBay has sent out notices to folks that have caused me, people going off of me today. I, in fact, I got a little short, it's a minute short showing a, a, a baseball ticket from the New York Giants from 1942. Sold for 225 bucks. The ticket was uh, done as a sell similar yesterday morning. And five or 10 minutes after I did sell similar, I did 3,000 listings on sell similar yesterday morning. 
Five or 10 minutes later, I get a real nasty message from a guy who said, is this your loan? I've, I've talked to the guy a couple of times. He wanted to think about the ticket price because I originally had 450 on it. So he gets really mad because eBay sent him a notice telling him that I sold that item. It's no longer for sale. It's been yeah. sold or, or something. Yeah, I've and seen so that. He was all mad and said, well, I thought we had an agreement. I, you know, I'm like, I didn't sell it first off. And he was all mad. And it, it turned into a back and forth. Again, I was very polite. I might even show this because I've got another another couple uh, emails that I've gotten in that I wanted to explain some processes. But he was totally mad. At the end of the day, though, we, I calmed him down and told him how everything works. And he ended up buying it. But th the point of it is some of those emails that eBay sends out are are bad like them sent what ebay is doing in the new update is they're sending out a notice that states hey leave feedback but yeah, that so. notice doesn't correspond with when the item act it doesn't go by the item was delivered right it goes by estimated delivery time so people are getting right. it it a notice yeah. from ebay like it should yeah. already be there they're thinking and right. it's not and then they're leaving right. bad feedback i've had three or four people tell me that they got bad feedback for items that weren't there and i don't know how you can leave bad feedback for something that isn't there because it's not within that time frame so something else is going on and anyway i i, I i'm puzzled by why you would send out all these notices like um best offer stuff a lot of people don't respond because they get so many of those things in. That's why eBay limits them and, and the whole aspect on that. But anyway. Hey, by the way, if anyone wants a good idea for a drinking game, just every time someone incorrectly types Don for Dom or Dom for Don in the chat. Happens all the time. Can, everyone can take a drink. <laughs> I, get them, I get them on my videos where people say, hey, Dom. I'm sure I've, right. I think we've showed them to each I, other. Before. I've been called Don so many times. Yeah, I've been called Don so many times. <laughs> Including too. today, Midwest Picker did, but then he quickly corrected it. But you know, Dave. the problem is the N and the M are right next to each other on the uh, on the keyboard, so it messes everything up. <laughs> yeah, I get that too. I don't. It doesn't bother me. I know what I know. I know the intentions are are ninety nine point nine. Some people of the think it's really true. Like one person the other day, said, and I said, and the person been watching me for a while and writing me a message and saying, "Hey, Don, Don, Don." I'm like, "Well, by the way, it's Dom, not Don." They're like, "You say it like it's like it's Don." Like they really thought like I was saying Don on the show, and I'm just like, "I don't know. I don't. I don't think so." But. <laughs> Well, I anyway. still get it from people I've talked to too for a while, but I'm, no, you know, I don't. No, no. <laughs> Tommy says, which one is Dom? So, all right. Now, what do you think about that? The we talked about the number of uh, or percentage of buyers went down. I think it was uh, what was it, eight percent or? Uh, uh, it's ten percent. Uh, well, eight or nine percent. But depends but, but, on the length of time. It's ten percent down totally just last year, and they're projecting a decline five to seven possibly this right. this first quarter so yeah. we might be talking a 20 yeah. percent decline right so okay so an annual annual active buyers it says decline by nine percent so that gets nine the, point something else you can look nine at point something yeah it's, round it's, off. but so 147 million global active buyers now they also have added we didn't haven't really talked about this yet but maybe briefly but uh annual active seller decline of eight percent well, so eight point nine something i think is what i so, got out of so okay maybe yeah but so it's it's kind of a wash in terms of both of them i mean i guess the ideal situation would have been i mean if you're gonna have uh, let's see if you're gonna have the if you're gonna have the buyers decline not have as much um not have as much not have as much buyers um i, I mean but the merchandise is down too. So the lack of buyers right. equates to a lack of merchandise, which means that it's the same level playing field, whether they were on the platform or not for the rest of the people who are still there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if, if you're, if, if you were saying we'd have 10% more business, we'd also have 10% more buyers. So how much is that is coming from? I think they've underestimated running off a bunch of buyer or sellers that those sellers actually buy 99 percent of the time i buy stuff on ebay i'm sure you do too yeah i don't know anybody who doesn't sell on ebay who doesn't actually buy something as well if, if you do niches or you're into collectibles you're buying and selling all the time and if you run off a buyer they're not gonna or a seller you're gonna they're not gonna buy either right right but 
would you want like relative to the buyer decline would you want to see it be like it is now where it, the where the sellers have declined by about the same percentage or would you want to see the sellers go up compared to that or would you want to see the number of sellers go down because you could look at it both ways if the sellers went down more than the number of buyers and you could say well i have less competition and i have more buyers out there well don't look at it from the buyers look at it at a gross merchandise volume yeah if the gross merchandise volume doesn't fall at all or increases but right. the buyer the sellers right. go down the sellers go down 10 percent. all of us are better off right the only way you're going to keep the the site going is if you're getting more volume of merchandise sold on the platform and this goes for any site there's this isn't just an ebay thing if if, if the, the if this trend keeps going <clears throat> you know I, it's it's going in the wrong there's no there's no there's no idea whatsoever how to steer it back up without raising more fees that i see again they've been going down for almost two years they've lost yeah. what they were two years ago they're down below that even yeah, I mean, this, you're right. I mean, this has been a consistent issue for years in which they, they come up with reports that are similar to this in which they say the revenue has gone up, but the gross merchandise volume has gone down. I mean, that, this is not the first time this happened Go look before the pandemic and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I remember. I remember. I know we've both been following this for years, um, but how long could you keep doing that? Because eventually like it, so, you know, it's these earnings calls. I mean, they're very focused on the shareholders and stuff and. They're trying to improve the stock value, obviously, for the shareholders. But but for us, you know, but that's a short term investment. That's right. a short term thinking. That's that's not right. going to fix or direct right. or steer the, the right. direction of the platform anywhere else. But right. in a downward spiral, if it keeps going in that structure, because they're buying back stocks to overinflate the value, even as it's going down in value. So they're buying them at less and less as the stock prices keep going down. So what they bought last year in stock buybacks is now worth, what, 18% less than it was when they bought it back. So that investment was a loss. Then them buying back their stock from last year is a loss. It, it's it's basically a loss on paperwork anyway. Yeah. So there's been stock, buy and they've been doing that for a while too with the stock buybacks. Also, they're shredding off other parts of their classifieds other HubSpot. investments right and they all made money they took though they they eliminated a value for the company that actually brought them revenue whether they were doing anything else or not there were two right. subsidiary places that that indirectly made them a lot of money and were a value and asset to the company so they're shedding off assets did you did you look at the operating uh were, were off too so they lost an operating costs as well too if you saw that yeah yeah so it wasn't just <clears throat> they're not just hitting it off in, in one certain area or not. Some of the other numbers look horrid. And again, that's why the stocks tumbled. Whether they did most companies, if you you're reporting fourth quarter numbers that are better and they exceed it, even if even though it's only six cents, six cents when you multiply it out times 10 billion stocks is a lot of money. You know, that's a dividend instead of 99 cents, they paid out what 105, six cents. So I mean most companies who have that type of an increase, they beat the projections are, are going to be on the high side. You should see their stocks going up. But, you know, when you're releasing data that that shows it, it's a trend now. That's the problem. Right. You can't wash right. a good fourth quarter when a trend's showing the opposite direction. Right. So but so this is but this is where the conflict lies in which, um, you know, eBay is happy uh, on in the fact that they are increasing the revenue. That's good. But for, for us as sellers, you know, we're not really looking, we're not really looking at that, at the, at the revenue. We're really looking at the gross merchandise volume. We want to see that go up because that means there's more sales on the platform. And we, and don't get me wrong. I mean, we'd all be jumping up and down for eBay and cheerleading for them saying, great, if their revenue went up $2.6 billion. And that was because GMV went up significantly. We'd love that. I would be per I would be right. shouting for right. the rooftop saying, Hey, I'm fine with the raise or an increase in the fees if that's what's gonna happen to the store. I, I if yeah. they added 25% to my store and then increased the fees, even a whole percentage point, it'd yeah. be a win-win for me no matter what. Right. So you this know, right. This is where the problem, but this is where the problem lies. And this is why, you know, if eBay is watching, this is why there are complaints. Some, you know, from sellers is because sellers are, are frustrated about that. They, you know, it doesn't seem to really be the focus. Uh, uh, it, it's purely, we want to stay, and I get it as a corporation, they want to see the revenue go up and however yeah, they can. Not, 
if if right. you're let let's the group of people that they're worried about are all well to do. The people who who they're lining the pockets have probably millions in the bank right now. And you're talking to maybe a couple thousand people that are going to get some huge kickback from all this stuff, the, the CEO and all this other crap. But the rest of us make up 17 million sellers. That's right. that's their full-fledged number just for eBay US. So yeah. 17 million people are, eh, just push you over here. We'll worry about these couple thousand who are making millions of dollars a year on, on the stocks. Now, that's not a, a model that's going to stay there's you can't keep doing that you're you're as right, you right, show total right. disrespect for those who created the platform made it what it is like us us so you, you you're gonna right. run them off and then you're not gonna have any base you've already sold right. off you're valuable so if you need to pawn something like if you if you need you need money and you're pawning everything at the end of the day you pawn everything you've got nothing left to put your cards on the table so ebay's already thrown all their cards out and all they have is the site itself basically i right. mean they could split off uh, you know, auto auto aspect of it, the car side, but that's about it. I could see them selling that as well. So, okay. So we've got these issues. We've got the, this continued, it's the same issue really that keeps coming up over and over and over again. It's not, it's not going away. I don't know if it's ever going to turn around who knows. Um, but you know, until that time, I think we need to talk with the audience and I've seen some questions come in there about, okay, well, what do we do now? Given that this is, uh, the situation. So how do we succeed on eBay, despite the fact that, you know, there's decrease in, in, in GMV, there's decrease in buyers, there's decrease in sellers, there's significant decreases. How do we survive in that uh, platform? Um, and not only how do we survive on eBay and, and be successful on it still, but I saw a question from Duncan in terms of how high the fees need to get and how bad the things need to get before you decide that you're not going to deal with ebay anymore and obviously there are some people who've made that decision which is why they've left but um you know i haven't made that decision at this point i mean i still am sticking with it so um you know but d we've obviously we need to have this discussion uh for people because we don't want people necessarily to just say all right well this earnings report sucks and i quit <laughs> well the, 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 i look at it I get hate if I if I complain or say something about it. If you don't say nothing, nothing's ever going to happen. So I don't. Why don't you quit if you hate it so much? Well, I'm a business. I'm not. This isn't a personal thing, and I'm mad. I'm just not going to go there anymore. I'm a business. I make revenue. I don't quit a job or quit revenue unless I've got something else to replace it. That's what a business right. does. There's right. nothing wrong with having issue with what's going on because. Obviously, we're right about the direction the company is going. It's not me. It's the paper. It's their own numbers. It's not, I didn't create the numbers. I didn't create them losing 30 million uh, buyers on the site over a certain length of time. That's not me. I'm just looking at the numbers and can see the writing on the wall for the last five, six years and, and concerned about it. You know, right. I'm not going to quit until it's not practical and I'm not making money. I'm not going to be happy. Right. It's like working for right. a bad boss. I'm not going to quit if that bad boss still pays my bills and I have nowhere else to go with it. Now, obviously, I could afford to lose eBay if it really, really happened. We've got everything backed up. I own my listings on many other places. You know, I, I, I always recommend doing that, but... <clears throat> I'm not going to give up. And I never, ever would tell anybody else to give up. I've talked to many people into giving it more time, see what happens. If you're truly not happy with it or it wasn't what you expected, that's a different story. Right. I would never tell somebody to jump ship if you're making revenue and it's paying your bills. Yeah, I, I would never do that. I pay my bills right. with this. It's it's part of my income, part of my revenue, you know, and, and, and the majority of what we make is from reselling. Why would I cut some of that off when I don't have to? I may not be happy about it. But again, if, if you never tell or say a word and just eat up whatever they say, nothing's ever going to change. Absolutely. It, it's just going to get worse and worse. And the numbers are getting worse and worse. Yeah. If more people complained about it, it would have to be addressed because it would get to the, the shareholders, the, the, the board of directors. They'd look at their numbers and then go, well, look, everybody out there is having a problem with what you guys are doing. You don't know what you're doing. The long run is all that matters. I'm playing a long run game. I'm not even worried about today, tomorrow, or the next day. I'm worried about five years from now, and that's what eBay isn't doing. Now, we'll, we'll, you want to start off with some options? to? Well, I wanna... Yeah, I'll come up with a few options um, that I talk about in this situation. So first of all, I think everybody, you need to know your numbers, and I, 
I know not everybody does know that their numbers. You have to go in, you have to look, and you have to make sure you're looking at what your, your profit margin is. And then you've got to see if fees are increasing, how much that's <clears throat> cutting into your bottom line. So not only do we have you know, eBay fees that uh, are increasing, but you're also going to have, for example, increases in, in, in postage services fees as well. There's inflation, all sorts of things are, are happening to, to increase costs. So you've got to find ways, number one, to try to either decrease the cost or you've got to find a way to pass the cost on to the buyer. Um, one of those two things is, is an option to look at. So if you're not sourcing things, for example, in bulk or as much bulk as maybe you, sh as you can not making those kind of deals, that's something to explore in terms of, instead of just going out maybe and buying lots of one-offs. So that could be ROI to do. Um, so yeah, so that's very important. Um, it may be you're more judicious in terms of the types of offers you accept in the past. If you were more just, all right, yeah, I'll just take five bucks off. Oh, all right. I'll just take 10 bucks off. Now, you know, your numbers, you think about it a little bit more and say, you know what? I'm not just going to, I'm not going to take this offer just $10 off. I'm going to counter offer halfway. So, it'll, and maybe the person will take it at five off. So you got to start thinking more like that. That's another example of passing things on to, to the consumer. Cause you know, you got to think they're not just buying things on ebay they're buying things from other places they're going to the grocery store every day they see that prices are going up so you know more and more people are getting used to unfortunately that prices are going up uh and in terms of prices going up that's another thing you have to look at getting into products where there is a higher price and maybe a higher profit margin for you so if you're avoiding uh maybe more pricier items and you're not getting into things, for example, that are in the 50 to hundred dollar range or above, start looking into paying up maybe a little bit more for the merchandise that has a higher profit margin for you down the road. So that's another thing to look at. Uh, and then what we always talk about is new niches, uh, because if you're, if the niche that you're in is getting cut into so much by added fees and all sorts of added costs and just not viable anymore, it might not be a thing where you need to move off the platform. It might just be you need to expand into a different niche that has more of a a healthy ROI for you. So those are all things I think everyone's going to have to keep thinking about. I mean, and yes, and everyone's going to be different. There's no way Don and I are going to be able to come up here and say, if the fee percent gets to 21, then everyone quit eBay. Like we're never going to say that. Like you've got to look at it yourself, know your own numbers and say, okay, I could live like Don said, I could pay my bills with this ROI that I get. Now that might work for Don. It might work for me. It might not work for somebody else. So everyone's going to be different with that. And you've just got to figure out where are you comfortable? And is there another platform that you could start dabbling in a little bit more? Maybe you dabble into Poshmark. Maybe you dabble into Facebook Marketplace. Maybe you dabble into whatnot or whatever and start seeing. Maybe you start a YouTube channel like Tracy did and see if maybe, hey, maybe that'll work. Maybe I could do some online selling, whatever. Um, explore different options. Maybe you start a Facebook group, whatever. I mean, there's so many different options out there now. You don't have to feel like eBay is the only thing to go to. You don't have to do... Social media is great, fine and dandy, but I don't promote my eBay at all, really, on social media. I don't post my links to my store. I don't expect people to go to it. If if you if you do social media and you want to do it for selling, that's great. If you do it on Facebook, though, and you send out stuff, I, I have friends who have done it. They lost all their friends because they were constantly advertising for stuff, and it drove people nuts. But I don't use uh, social media mostly to advertise any of my stuff. So you don't necessarily have to do it. <clears throat> unless unless obviously you want to um but like with dom was just talking about i went through the reason i sell everything i do now is because we've picked out the categories the items that make us the most profit the most roi the highest roi so if <clears throat> one makes us a higher higher uh, roi it has a better sell through rate overall as a category i might ditch something else i sell and just not even worry about it that's why right. i gave up clothing that's why i gave up books because my my return on my investment is like 10 times higher now than I when, when I was doing books and clothing all the time. And the amount of stuff, again, Dom talked about bulk purchases. The amount of stuff I get in bulk is just pretty much everything these days. I, I almost never buy one-offs ever. It's almost always strictly bulk and mass quantity, a thousand of this, 500 of that, 200 of this. 
um, whatever it is, that's how it is. It's always in bulk because it's easier to get the stuff I, I get and sell the values there. Now that can go for anything you're doing. You've got to look at your numbers. Just again, like Dom's saying, you've got to know all of your numbers. You've got to know where your every dime is going out of your, your business to figure out what makes you the most. If you're selling a thousand of something a month, a dime is a, is a considerable amount when you hit the end of the year. And if you get 20 items that you can increase a dime, a quarter, a nickel, or, you know, not sell something because it, it's, it's pennies, that's another issue. And a lot of people don't figure in their, their time invested into this. So <clears throat> if you're making a couple dollar profit, but it's taking you far longer to list those cheaper items, it's not worth your time to do it because you could be spending the exact same amount of time and list things that'll give you three or four times that amount of profit every time it sells. And, and that's one of those things that everybody always doesn't leverage into their, their items is the amount of time one item will take you to list versus another one. We try to not list anything that takes more than five photos. And that's just the, the thing that we do because it, it means I can list far more. It's, it's a numbers game. Once you hit a certain point, you got to feed the machine. So if you can keep those numbers, keep the items listing, keep stuff coming in, that's your best bet. You'll make far more listing you know, items quicker than you will if you've got to like list a shirt and take 12 photos to make sure it's right. If, you, if you're only listing 10 items an hour and there's other items that will make you more money than that and you can list 50 of them an hour, it's a no-brainer. But if you're not paying attention, you don't know your numbers, you're not going to catch on to that. With eBay, there's, there's enough data on eBay in the hub to get those numbers out of your, your stuff. It's not like hidden knowledge. They're, they're actually giving you a considerable amount that you used to have to pay for. That's one of the things they give, but a lot of people still don't use those, those new uh, reports and stuff and look at them. And that's, that's wrong. You need to know those numbers, you know, <clears throat> very good point. I, I think that uh, a lot of, you know, when we talk about numbers, a lot of people, I think tend to think of the numbers that I was kind of bringing up, like cost of goods and, how much you're selling something for and uh, that sort of thing, but not necessarily the time factor. And that, that is huge. Cause you know, it is very true that time is money and you've got to, you know, also reassess. It's true. You know, if you're, if you're having issues with, you know, where your, where your profit margins are, you know, look, okay, well, are there things I could do to increase the chance that I'm going to make sales period by just getting more things up? Obviously you got to list things that people want, but if you have those types of things, what what are things that are barriers right now that are preventing me from able being able to do that? And then, you know, just being more efficient with your time, coming up with a new system, a new plan, that type of thing. You don't have to wait till January 1st to do that. A lot of people like to do that with New Year's resolutions. But, you know, you could start a clean slate at any time and just say, all right, starting tomorrow, I'm changing. I'm going to try to put in a new system uh, that's more time efficient. So. Do some projections every day of the week and see if your numbers are going up for the month. I've got videos how to do it. Just do some simple projections, simple math. Anybody can do it. You'll instantly know if a day goes down and your numbers start to decline for the month. You can track what you should be doing at the end of the month on day two, three, four of the month. So if those numbers are, are going down, you run sales, you do other things. So those, those numbers aren't going down. You know, if, if you might have to do promoted listings as much as I would hate it, if, if it for some reason our sales took some dive, I might attempt to use it. But uh, luckily, we're lucky. I cross my fingers. Our sales are still fourth quarter numbers and I'm not having any other than a day slow here. The next day busy. I'm not having the, the big issues. But again, it depends on what you're what you're selling. One more point. And I'm going to hand it back off to Dom. But if you're selling like Dom with selling expensive seventeen hundred dollar comic books and stuff like that. If I'm selling expensive stuff, the people who are buying it, it doesn't matter if the economy is bad or not. They've got extra money. And if you're just selling clothing and stuff that's, you know, $10 profit, $15 profit or whatever the case may be, those, those are necessities. And if people can't, you're talking about two different types of economical groupings where people who have extra funds versus people who barely can get, get by. So if, if you want to have more steady income, and, and again, socioeconomic wise, you need to be selling items that people always will have extra funds to buy. And I guess that's a big point on it. Comic books, for example, trading cards, vintage toys, vintage in general, most everything that I sell are items that no one really needs. No one needs any of the stuff that I sell. It's not a necessity. It's not going to help anything in their daily life. It's not going to give them anything other than maybe some joy with it. It's 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 just um, reminiscent stuff. It's it's 
would you not say that's a large chunk of what you sell? It's nobody needs it. Yeah, I, I really don't have too much stuff on there that people actually need. <laughs> well, see, that's so, the point. You've got to understand the difference between need and right. and just hey, I want it. There, right. There's a big difference. If you buy and sell stuff that people don't really need, you'll have better luck, in my opinion, and the numbers will will pan out because there's more people with money, and, and the economy doesn't. You know, the, even if the comedy die or the economy dies, most of the people who are buying a seventeen hundred dollar comic book. It's not going to be hurt by that because they already have seventeen hundred dollars. No, like, the guy, the, no, right? The guy who bought it is an orthodontist, so you know he, he what the, for, to him that seventeen hundred dollars is some kid's braces treatment for a couple months. You know, like so. <laughs> and even at that, he he is not. Even if the economy drops overall, he is not right. going to be dropped. No. Everybody's no. still going to have to get the dental work. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, you, if so. you can center in on on buyers. That are that are going to have that extra the the expendable income. Those are the ones again. That's why I sell what I sell. That's why I don't sell clothing. That's why I don't sell many home goods. That's why I don't sell books unless they're vintage and collectibles, and I can get them in bulk for almost nothing, because I've steered away from items that have that summer drop off intentionally. I'm I was sick of the drop off. I was sick of the other issues. I was sick of not being able to list enough of them. <laughs> It, it, you could sell anything. There's there's always a market for anything, but you've got to figure out what what you're good at and what's the best market for you based on where you live and what what's available. I guess. Yeah, yeah. And again, there's there's so many individual variables about there out there. And keep in mind, again, Don and I are just sharing our own personal experiences, our own business <clears> models. <throat> but of course, everyone lives in different regions of the country, has different models. So, you know, you're gonna have to figure out, like we always say, it's cliche, but what works best for you. But you know we're just giving you what works for us so definitely definitely so uh, again it, it there's a, a million different ways to do this but you know it, it, you've got to center in on what makes you the most money what you can get the most and no more i say this all the time knowledge is truly power and i'll never forget yeah. that from going back to schoolhouse rock back in the 70s <laughs> the, the more you know it's all about the data now. Everything is about the data. If the more data you have, the more knowledge you have up in your, your noggin up there, the better off you're going to be. If, if you know more than every person you're dealing with, you're always going to come out ahead on those deals. You're going to know what, what it's worth. You're going to know those areas. So it, it, unless you're, you're going to spend some time and invest your own valuable time in learning stuff, the other guy is always going to get the, the, the advantage on you. And that's what you don't want to happen. It's not always about grabbing my phone and looking up something because that's only going to go so far. You'll never be able to break a certain point without knowing more. It's just there's no other way around yeah. it from what I see. Before I forget, I, we've got over 300 people in house. It's Please awesome. slam that thumbs up button if, if you're enjoying the conversation. I constantly forget to even say that it's been over an hour and I totally haven't even brought it up at all. But again, if you're enjoying the conversation, we hit just over 100 feedbacks now but or a thumbs up but again show some love if you're enjoying the conversation yeah well i, I actually i have a um i, I was going to mention it towards the end but it actually segues into what you're saying now uh so i i don't normally do this but i have a premiere dropping tonight at 10 p.m eastern standard time and it's actually about what you're talking about i uh, most people who are used to watching me go to estate sales, I, I know who I'm going to and I go to places that love to liquidate stuff. So I usually get things for these pretty shocking prices at the end when I bundle things up. Uh, but this time, I don't want to ruin too much of it, but you could tell from what it, the title of it, which is that these prices were all insane. Basically, the model that was used for this particular estate sale was they basically said, well, this is how much it goes for on eBay. And some of the stuff was even overpriced compared to what they had enlisted for on eBay. And keep in mind, there were things that were completely, th they thought they knew what they were looking up on eBay, but sometimes it actually wasn't really a match. And so basically through the video uh, premiere tonight, I basically show people ways that even in that kind of situation, how you could use that knowledge base and still escape with a bunch of treasures. As long as there's enough stuff there, you could find some stuff uh, and still do well and still make a good deal. But uh you, you've got to go beyond, like you're saying, just looking stuff up. Eventually, you've got to develop that uh, experience over time, which will partly come from looking stuff up. But eventually, you know, you're just going to know certain things. You're going to have a feel. You're going to have a gut. Um, there's a lot of items I pick up in this video that are exactly like that. Well, some of the places I go, there's you can't look stuff up. Your phone won't. You won't have reception. I mean, that's it's the just, worst. I hate. 
<laughs> so if you don't know, like I go, uh, well, I don't have it in a while, but when I used to go out to some of the old old farmhouse sales and stuff, there was no reception out there. There's no towers anywhere right. near it. So if right. you didn't know what you were doing, right, you're going to screw yourself over. Yeah. Just like those that go to like uh, an antique auction, and I've been to hundreds of them. You'll see the, the ones that are gung-ho and they think they're going to be doing so great and they'll overbid on every single thing they buy because they want it. They know there's some value in there, but they let their 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 imagination get ahead of them and they 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 up themselves up so high on the, the, the bids that they put in that at the end of the day, by the time they put time into it, they're losing money. Again, yeah. you've, if you go to a sale wherever you go, even if you can't look it up, you've got to know more than the people selling it. Otherwise, don't bid because you're going to end up screwing yourself over. A lot of people will buy stuff and think, you know, it's such a good deal because the price was right. And it's not a good deal half the time because you might have to like buying records. I bring this up a lot because I see the same lots all the time. People buy thousands of records for three or four hundred dollars thinking they're going to make some money. And then they spend days on end trying to look them up to figure out what's the ones that are worth the most money to sell. And by the time they're they even looked up half of them, they're already burned out from looking them up to realize that there's only a couple dollars in each one. And then you've got hours in the listing each one, even if you do it on Discogs with no photos. So, you know, a lot of people think they got the full knowledge and then they're, they, they, they just stop and say, I got it. And then they end up getting screwed over left and right. And I see it constantly. I'd rather hear about it before it happens, but it's usually, hey, I just bought all this stuff. What am I going to do now? That's usually <laughs> right. what I hear. Can't do that. I'm Can't sure you heard that. that. Yeah, and actually, I, one thing I talk about in the sale, too, is that if you're not careful, like if you just go somewhere and you're just buying stuff because you think it looks cool and you just think, oh, wow, it's an estate sale. Oh, it's a garage. It looks cool. I should just be able to get it and flip it. And you're not taking into account the size. You're not taking into account, you know how much it's going to cost to ship, whether you're doing calculator or not, someone's going to have to pay for it. Um, you're not taking into uh, account any potential differences. You're not looking at um, what the actual uh, quality of it, what the condition of it is. Uh, you know, if, if you're not paying attention to that stuff, you could really get screwed by some of these places that have things priced, you know, fairly high and uh, wind up losing a bunch of money real fast. So this, 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 uh, sale was a great example of that. We, if you ever see it, uh, some of the items that are in there just you wouldn't you wouldn't even believe some of the prices. So it's crazy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I probably would. I've seen those sales where they yeah. actually print up an eBay yeah. thing and say, yeah. "Here, this is yeah. they got them yeah. like everything that's expensive." I yeah. just leave. I don't mess with it. I'm not going to sit yeah. there. You and... can't. You can't really argue with those people. Either. No, they know what they got. They, yeah. they know the price, or they they watched <laughs> Antique Roadshow, and that's worth a million dollars. See, that's another thing that that far too many people almost rom romanticize about reselling. And I don't know why they they, they they do it, but too many YouTubers make it look like everything they buy is going to be worth a fortune every time. Yeah. The majority of what most people get, unless it's some real high end hot item that's just wanted so much, is going to be a long tail these days. I don't care what it is, it, it, unless most sellers who do very well either have real high priced items or they're selling a lot of items because they have a lot of items in their store. And that that's the best way, in my opinion, to be, to, to, to weather the storm and is to grow the business, your foot, your, your, your footprint and, and your overall amount of listings. The more you have up, the more you're going to make. I mean, it's just a given in my book. Yeah. Yeah. Columbus fleet oh, must not be talking about Ohio. English town. I don't know what that is. Never mind. I don't want to comment on that one. I can't read what it says. Yeah, but there's there, there's no reason, though, to jump ship unless you have something else in place. Uh, Don was talking about, you know, other options and stuff. There's a lot of other options. There's a lot of different things that aren't even necessarily related to reselling, but that as a reseller, you would understand more. So there's a lot of ways to make money on platforms without being a reseller. You can make a ton of money on eBay and Amazon without even being a reseller if you didn't know that. Um, I talked about some of them just the other day in a Patreon video, but there are honestly, sincerely ways to make money without owning or doing really anything. And, and those are the ones that, that catch people by surprise. If you get the business aspect, the, the just on looking at the numbers and stuff, the, the, the numbers are there for all kinds of different things that you could sell. It doesn't have to be even a real item anymore these days. It doesn't have to be a used item. There's middle marks. There's middle things. And I'm not talking about NFTs or anything else like that. But there, there's, man, I could, I could tell you a different way to make money every single day of the week for years and not run out of things to talk about. 
There are just too many options these days. And again, it doesn't mean you give up on eBay or not because eBay fits into so much of this stuff that that's these, these no content items. I mean, it, it's just, anyway, there's, there's just so much stuff out there that I see. And, and too many people see uh, videos of people saying this, I find stuff everywhere I go. It's worth a fortune. It's worth this. It's worth that. And it's just, it's not like that. It's not a fa It's not a fantasy. This isn't a get rich quick scheme at all. And no, I, I think no. that's where I, I, I try to say it more often these days because I'm, it almost gives me and you a bad name sometimes when these folks are just saying everything I got is worth a million dollars. And, you know, it, it drives me nuts because it, it's not that way in real life. I've done this for, geez, going on 30 years and it's never been that way. I mean, yeah, back in the day, you'd sell a lot more, but nothing's a sure thing. Even if you think it's a sure thing when you're buying it, you could miss a tiny little spot on a shirt and it's not worth hardly anything. Now. Yeah. Yeah. There's always there's always risks. Yeah, there's a lot of risks if you don't know the categories you're in. That's that's the huge. That's huge. And again, far too many people don't get that at all. They they miss that whole aspect of it, at least from, from my personal experience. Somebody made a comment like, is that Crystal? There are really stupid people and we know it, so no worries. Yeah, there are a lot of this is not, I'll have to say this again, this is not a quick, uh, get rich quick scheme at all. Uh, again, I, I can't express that enough. You're not going to get into my Patreon group or someone's course out there and whatever they tell you, and you're not going to just instantly be selling money. Every person is different. Every place you live is different. So if, if somebody's telling you everybody's going to be able to do this, hop on board, you're all going to make a million dollars watching my videos or something. I, I would never promise that. There's no guarantees at all with what you do. I've When I first started, I bought some bad stuff. We all learned from that. I'm sure you've had those same situations too. I oh, yeah. Saying. Yeah. Well, the, I think the, the, the lure for a lot of people is that, you know, you go, it's kind of like the psychology we were talking about. Um, sometimes when something bad happens, you, you, you look towards the bad thing. Um, but with reselling and also with YouTube channels, I think, there are a lot of people out there who will look and they'll see people who have either a real successful channel uh, or, um, you know, they're showing a lot of successful things that they're selling and they're looking at it and they're saying, wow, like th it must just always be like that. And it's just, it, or it must be relatively straightforward and pretty simple to do. It looks easy, you know, like behind, you know, just from watching it. But uh, it's really not. I mean, that's why every once in a while, like if I do a video, uh, especially if I go out garage selling, because we have to edit, edit these videos and put them together once in a while i have to stop and just tell people hey just fyi just so you know like it looks like i'm going from like one house to another house to another house and just finding all this awesome stuff but in reality i actually just went to 10 straight houses where i couldn't find anything good to pick up like you know sometimes i'm exaggerating with that but but that happens sometimes you know so uh but it doesn't always c come through in the video because the, the flip side of that is that people don't really want to watch you going to 10 straight houses where you don't find stuff. So that's the other problem. So sometimes you just have to make sure you explain it. So people don't get the wrong idea. Sometimes those videos though are helpful because you might go there and, and say, well, I should probably buy this or this is probably worth something. And the, the, the people not finding a thing can tell you, Hey, none of this stuff's worth anything. You're not going to be able to sell it. Sometimes those videos, if they're done right, I think are, are almost better. Because, again, there's too many people that will go there and, and say, oh, look at the value in that. They'll get it home and they're like, oh, my gosh, I'm never going to sell this. I mean, I've had those days. It's been a long time. But I, I remember those days where I thought, I'm good. We're going to make a fortune. You know, boom, I looked up or I, I missed one little spot on it or I, yeah. I got the wrong model number or something. I missed one little stupid little thing. And now I just screwed myself and spent $200 on something worth 50 bucks. You know, I think we've all had that happen. Yeah, I actually did a video. I literally did a video once that said I went to an estate sale and found nothing or something like that. Like I literally walked out with nothing. I also had another one with a thrift store by me where I, I, I actually challenged anyone to go to the video. And to this day, no one has ever found anything that's of, like I literally filmed everything in the thrift store and said, I defy anyone here to find anything that's good. And still, be all of our thrift stores. Oh, God, it was so bad. So, you know, sometimes those things do happen. Well, the, the, again, like people talk about what they can get here and there. The thrift stores around here are are 
terrible. There's nothing at any of the thrift stores around here. I have to drive yeah. to another state over state line to get to the first one close by that's good. And that's 35, 40 minutes from here. Right. You know? And that's the best one close by. It's the closest one these days. Most of them have you know, shut down or they're just terrible. Everything goes online from the Goodwill, the Salvation Army. Everything goes online somewhere. All the Goodwills send their stuff to like a central auction house here. You know, and even the stuff at the Goodwill online auctions, they go for more than, than I could sell them for on eBay most of the time uh, because it's charity. And I don't know how anybody could ever make money or they're not paying attention or they think it's got to be a good deal because the price is so high. It must be something good in there. And it's, it's usually not the case. Again, that's why I don't sell certain things. You got to work with what you got, figure out where the profits are, figure out what gets you the highest profit. You're higher, the, the higher the ROI, the better off you're always going to be. If you're not looking at those numbers and you're just going, look at all this money rolling in or look at I'm selling all these. And if you're not, again, I'd rather sell, you know, 20 items worth 50 bucks than 20 items giving me $2 profit. It's it, it, it especially when you can compare the amount of time it takes to list them. List the it's don't list items that only make you a dollar or two, especially if they take you more than a few minutes to list. You know? Right. Hey, I was looking. I wanted to bring something up to you because I've heard you talk about it before, and I have as well on my my news broadcast. But um, I don't know if you saw, but eBay started this thing where um, they ha they actually have an Instagram page where they're basically promoting like high value items that they're selling. So, for example, they just did a, like a five minute video on on watches, and they have watches in there that they show for like you know people sell for like you know thousands of dollars hundreds that's of all dollars. they're investing the time watches shoes right right and... but but right but i wanted to bring this up because this is actually comes from the transcript of the earnings call uh that we were just talking about and it's specifically to the part where they talk about the um nine percent decline in the active buyers so and we were talking about this privately as well so about how they're trying to use this concept of high value buyers and high value uh, high value sellers too but uh they say the decline this nine percent decline they say well that actually was primarily driven by what they call low value buyers they're insulting them so they're right, leaving right, they're but not they literally call them low value buyers they said so that fell nine percent but they said we grew in high value buyers so high value buyers they said went up three percent so but the gross, my, gross my, merchandise volumes down. Right, right. But my point of bringing that up is that there definitely seems to be this increased focus by eBay on these high value buyers. And I've never, this is the first time I actually heard them literally use the phrase low value buyers. He's been saying that for a year. I've been talking about that for a year. He, I, I'm, I'm insulted. I brought that up because that's an insult to everybody who buys from me and almost everybody out there. I've been complaining about that statement he made almost a year because he's an idiot. Low, what, low value, low value buyers. He calls them low value yeah, buyers. Maybe, I, know, every, maybe I did hear it, uh, and I'm he's blanking been saying on it, it for a year. He only yeah. wants. They, in fact, if you go back from last year's numbers in Jan, in February, they cut off advertising because they don't want to advertise for low valued buyers. The coupons that they gave us are the replacement for them investing money. That's when the coupons were initiated. And that's literally what the CEO stated was that those coupons would take up the slack from them not advertising and pushing for the low valued items from low valued buyers. To me, that's calling me a low valued seller to low valued buyers. And in my right. opinion, if somebody called me a low valued buyer in front of my face at a store because I could only afford to buy 10 bucks, I would be insulted. I think that's a travesty to the people that made eBay eBay because, again, when eBay first started, it wasn't about high dollar stuff. It was cheaper collectibles that people just liked, and it wasn't about the money. And that's where they've that's why the CEO is ruining what's going on because he only cares about stuff that he cares about. He probably has expensive watches. He probably shows off with his expensive cars, his girlfriend or wife's expensive purses, his expensive shoes, and the investments again. Like the, the cards are investments these days. It's Wall Street running the prices and a lot of that crap that's going up. Like uh, um, Marvel Universe 1 card selling for $10,000 for a mass-produced card and calling it the first uh, first appearance or his rookie card for Black Panther or whoever the, the heck it is. It's, it's, it's 
It's a bubble market, and, right. and that's all it is about. That, that's in, that's offensive that he could even it's call. A bad term. Yeah, it, it's definitely a bad term. And they actually say for, further on in the report that um, they literally say this is a very, very, very conscious strategy on our part not to do couponing for low value buyers <laughs> so you're only going to get a coupon if you're willing to spend a lot of money if you're a casual ebay user we're not going to give you a coupon it literally says that in the that's that's the ceo is saying that in the in the actual uh he said report. that last year and and that's I, I i lost respect for the guy from day one after i saw his history but he doesn't know what he's doing you can't yeah. how long do you think it's going to take for them to keep running off lower and lower value especially if the markets start to change a lot of the collectible fields and stuff could go down at any point because they're they're relying on a bubble in those four specific what he calls them vertical vertical fields. So they're worrying about vertical sales moving across instead of increasing it. You can only sell so many five thousand dollar purses or five or ten thousand dollar shoes. There's only so many people that will buy it. They're going to hit a point where there's not going to be new people coming on for those expensive items. The value will, will burst. The value will go down. And they've already scared off all the, the lower people and insulted them by calling them low value. A so, dollar purchase, right. a five dollar oh, purchase, a okay. hundred dollar purchase is valuable to me. OK, but I want to I want to do a, related to I want to do an informal if you don't mind, Don, I want to do an informal poll in the in the chat right now. OK, because I, I want to know just this is just how divorced from reality this statement is from what the average eBay seller experiences. So this is, again, oh, it's made. Oh, Don, I got to go on with you more, man. Talk about a high, I guess it's a high value sell. I don't know. Let me see. Let me bring this up right here. We're talking about selling expensive comic books here. So hold on a second. It's not one of the $1,000 ones, but uh, uh, first full appearance of Gambit, X-Men 266. So just to ching that one for 172.50 right there. Uh, so I'm happy about that sale. That's awesome. So every time I go on your show, I seem to get a ching like that. But okay, so check this out. So this is what CEO said, in the, and I'm going to read from it verbatim. This little part. He says, "We uh, we call these people our enthusiast buyers. I've met a lot of these enthusiast buyers, right? Of course he has. He's in the same rich group as that. Right, right. But listen, listen to this. I, I want to know who's had this. Who has had this customer? Because I have not really. I really haven't. They wake up, they grab a cup of coffee. Wait, let me simulate it. Hold on. <laughs> they wake up. Oh, all right. They grab their cup of coffee, right? They <laughs> take a sip. They open up their eBay app. This is literally what it says. They shop eBay across multiple categories. And when you look at their spend, it's a very healthy spend level, right? $2,000 plus. Who's getting that? <laughs> he, he's talking about his rich friends no i know but i'm just saying so there's the poll if you're getting that type of person if you're getting that enthusiast buyer uh put a one in the chat if you're not getting that enthusiast buyer put a two in the chat i'm curious what do you think we're going to see don more ones or more twos <laughs> we know that's not happening look at their bounce rate that their bounce rate dick it, it contradicts that whole statement because their bounce rate has gotten worse <laughs> bounce rate means something and i don't even know if ebay knows what their own bounce rate is oh, is oh lots of two look at all these twos coming in <laughs> i don't see any ones there yet. won't be any ones very obviously <laughs> i don't think there's gonna be any ones yeah i mean even my comic buyers i mean like they're even they're not spending two thousand dollars like usually the most is like you know 1700 or something like that but i mean that's just crazy like but look, I, I wanted to document that down so you have it documented right there like it's just so divorced from the reality of what most your average eBay seller, the average person, the uh, you know the the There's core of what grew eBay, the grassroots movement, if you want to call it, or the grassroots group of people that really form eBay. You cannot make eBay survive off of watches and handbags. Nope. And that's what's that's where they're going with it. And that's the sad part. Again, I, I wished it wasn't so, but <laughs> it, it's just it's just ridiculous that you, that's the path they're going because they're gonna keep scaring off the low valued the bums basically. You can't afford five bucks, so you can't come on the site. They used to fund the coupons. They give a coupon out and, and eBay would cover the cost of the coupon. It wouldn't come out of your end. 
you know, so there was more incentive to buy more. Numbers are going to keep falling. I don't see anything changing that. And, and their strategy, you want a horizontal uh, uh, development in your plans. You don't want to go vertical. That means you're not growing it. It means you're just working across different levels that are already there. You're not increasing the overall platform. You've got to do a horizontal growth where you're bringing more people in. You know, you're not going to bring more people in buying watches and stuff that you can buy on other sites. It's the same thing. Like the real, real, you can buy all those purses somewhere else. And eBay's own authentication programs having left and right issues from what I see, where even the authenticators are sending out the wrong item to the buyer. And since it was a um, uh, cash sale, the item can't be returned. And then they don't return any recalls. Or I've heard so many stories. The message boards are flooded with people having issues or they're saying something's not authentic when it is. And I mean, just terrible stuff going on. And somebody's going to have to pay for all those fees. Right now, it's the Wild West with all the authentication. But at some point, either you or your buyers are going to be paying more for it. And they're not going to like that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So. There's no other way around it. And he liked my dramatization, by the way. So. <laughs> there is no other way around it, though. I mean, the numbers don't lie. That, that's the saddest part that I don't like to see the numbers. I, I figured they wouldn't be good just by way it's been going. And unfortunately, uh, I'm proven right. And I don't want to be proven right. I want them to go in another direction. Again, they're not going to apparently listen to anything but the idiot running the company. And. These people don't shop in the stores that even you or I probably would shop in. I mean, they probably got a butler or a maid that does it for them. You know, what's the what one of the politicians has a elevator for his freaking car? Yeah, you I know? mean, there, there's a, there's such a big difference between what goes on in, in corporate culture versus what goes on like what what you know the average person selling on eBay you know just deals with. I mean, like, um, I guess maybe a good example. I know you don't watch much TV, Don, but uh, go watch if for, for anyone who's watched it, go watch the. Uh, the series it was number one on netflix recently inventing anna with yeah, the whole it. documentation uh, a documentary dramatization of the anna sorkin story how she basically scammed all of these people uh who are like these highfalutin folks on um on wall street and all these uh big bankers and everything and just made convinced them that she was a german her uh, heiress but she wasn't no she, that even she, is. yeah she, she just she just made it up and they just all believed her and it just but it just goes to show this whole rich culture and everything and just kind of how people think and how people act and it's pretty interesting so yeah that's that's the biggest problem is he's not living in the real world and he's not a normal person anymore he's so far up the food chain that you know we're 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 low valued sellers low valued people you know yeah they i haven't seen him use that but you, you're right i mean by correlation you would call it low value seller I haven't seen him use that yet, but who knows? That might be coming down the road. Well, he's probably saying that in private. We don't care yeah. about these because this is going to be the five thousand dollars. So, what do I care about this guy over here selling ten dollars postcards? He's he's nothing to me. That's exactly the mentality. Whether it's out in front or they've said it or not, it's got to be there at the point with him saying low valued buyers. You you don't insult people on the platform, and I think if. Most of the folks heard that and knew that that's what was said because you'd have to go and watch it or read the transcripts but, just to hear that line. Okay, but th do you think they care at all about what we say here anymore on on YouTube about it? Like, because if if they just see us as representing the low value buyers, then you know, and their shift and focus is on the on the high value buyers. Well, they're like, trying to wash us out by putting out their own videos and their own stuff like that. That's what they're trying to do, and and. If, if everybody got together and said, this is crap, you guys are charging us for less service and we're not getting as much views and the merchandise is selling, it'd be a different story. But you've got the folks that do videos making it look like a fantasy world so they can market a course to somebody who's new to make the money off of that. They're not resellers. And that's what aggravates me a lot because there's far more people that are pretending to be a reseller to make the YouTube money. And, you know, then it hurts it for you and me and the folks who want to do it. Uh, there, there's... If no one's going to say something and no one's going to be honest with how it is, it's never going to improve. We're just going to keep seeing these numbers fall, and that's not going to help us. I don't get any joy out of eBay doing bad because it means that my financials could do bad because of it. You know, I don't get any joy whatsoever of talking about it. I don't get any joy. I always take hate for every one of these videos, and and but it it it's got to be said. I'm sorry, but the the, the numbers are. They're in free fall almost, man. I mean, come on. It's, it's in free fall. And you can't come back and say that it's, 
it's it's you know the pandemic's over because it's not really over and you can't say it's it's all this other stuff because the retail numbers aren't going there that way it's it's they're blowing it they're going to other platforms you know that everybody almost sells somewhere else nowadays almost everybody i know i don't i can't think of anybody maybe one or two patrons or something that that don't sell somewhere else everybody's got a couple platforms they're on and that's that's ebay's problem that they can't get loyalty anymore because of how they treat the people on the platform there's no loyalty for a site anymore at all yeah you know, it used to be a day when i would be diehard everything ebay ebay ebay, eBay. i don't care what anybody else to say it's all ebay and those days are long gone for 90 percent of the people who probably sell on the platform they've been screwed over one too many times or had bad buyers where ebay wouldn't stand up for the seller or called low value and all that other crap it, it, there's no concern for anything but lining their own pockets through stock buybacks and, and again this is all short-term goals i would want to make the site the biggest the best damn site it could be out there to make sure that that site's going to fly if everybody's happy and making good money and sales are coming in more people are coming to the site there'll be a buzz the stocks will go up and everybody would be happy but that's not what's happening unfortunately uh five day flipper asked don what would you do as ceo of ebay I wouldn't uh, take I, it. I would I, never take the spot. <laughs> well, all right. I'll answer it then. What I would do as CEO of eBay is, uh, seriously, I would really, I always think you got to, you got to bring your business back to its core. I mean, I guess another good example of a, of another company where something bad happened is if you think of Boeing, right? Uh, and how Boeing was, they were just known for safety. They were like the, that was the industry gold standard was Boeing. And then they got bought out. Well, yeah, they got bought out by another company and they started uh, kind of like they had another company come in that kind of was like taking charge of things and they were not really concerned about safety anymore. They were really more concerned Money. about, you know, increasing the price for the for the uh, you know, for the shareholders and just genuine gen generating revenue and profit. That's what they were their focus shifted to. It wasn't safety anymore. And as a result, what you saw were those multiple uh, 737 planes that started crashing. Uh, and be specifically because of that, when they started looking at the documents, that's exactly what happened. Cut in corners. So, so, right, they were cutting corners. And so that's what I mean. Like, if you wanted to bring that company back to what they were, you'd have to bring them back to focusing on what built them to where they were in that glory period, which was a safety conscious focused company. So with eBay, I would say what you've got to do is you've got to bring it back to what it was originally which is really the place where you could go and you could get just about anything which they actually just took that out they took that phrase out of the user agreement which i'm sure you probably saw that when Ina did that uh comparison but they, they took that out and 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 i would focus on getting a way to get more buyers on the site to get the gross merchandising volume up that's, that's the only way you're gonna grow it it's that's the only, the only way. way that's the only way that i would shift it my my goal would be Let's get the revenue up by increasing sales because sales and selling items on the site, that's ostensibly what the whole freaking platform is, a place where people buy and sell. Instead of losing 10 million or 10% of the amount of sellers and 10% of the amount of buyers, yeah. you need to switch it around where it's you're selling more items. So everybody knows, hey, they're selling so much stuff on eBay. Everybody is going to flock to eBay. The more people that sell on the platform, right. the more stuff that sells, the more buyers yes. they're yes. going to come to the site right. to buy all that stuff. Yes, if sellers yep. go, buyers go with them. Right, right. I've been, I've been saying this for a long time that they should have more ads out there, uh, out to the public that is just your average family of four, and they're sitting around, they're thinking of some low value item that they're looking for. Back to school items, pens, pens, right. even stuff right. like that would drop. And, and they just come up with a phrase that says, I found it on eBay. I even told the person who I had on my channel from eBay that one time. I actually said that. I said, you guys should have they an used ad. To have, they used to have, it used to say, right. I found it on, that used to be right. one of the terms they that used. Just be it. And you drill that in everyone's head. I found it on eBay. I found it on eBay. And just, and throw in some surprising things here and there where you might think the average person wouldn't think, oh, I could go find that on eBay. Instead, what we've got is an, is an advertisement this week on about three guys sitting around from, you know, high, high society guys who collect watches that are, you know, $10,000. One of the watches is $400,000 Rolex. 
that's not going to appeal to the average person who you want to get on there. But the way eBay's looking at it is if we could sell one of those $400,000 Rolexes, that makes up for 10,000 you know, buyers. You're right. Exactly. That's how they're looking at it. So it's just people just need to understand that. Well, you want that's both. You want both. You want the people who might want the $400,000 watch, but you also want the tens of thousands of other uh, people that are going to just buy a $10 postcard or a $20 comic book or a $15 pair of jeans. You, right. you I want them all. I don't They're not see, they're not seeing that though. They're not seeing that. They're they're in their own little bubble and, and it's going to kill the site. It's going to kill it. I could see, you know, a, a vulture capitalist coming in there and you know, they'd be ripe if the numbers keep going down. You know, again, the guy who's running the company was the only guy that would take it because of what the company did to Ina and David. And that's the only thing that I, I personally see out of that. The, the only idiot that would take it knowing federal charges were pending is the idiot running it. Again, that's my opinion. I'm allowed to say that. So and again, the numbers prove what I'm saying. They had the they had a gift of tons of sales flowing in because of a, a, a very unfortunate pandemic. They had a gift given to them and they've blown it. They they had so much extra money they could have spent billions to improve the site, fix the the code, advertise left and right, tell all the normal people out there that are suffering and trying to get by that hey you can find some good stuff that's cheap on our platform. It's not just about the millionaires, but they've turned the site into and uh, they're trying to make it an uppity like um, if you ever watch South Park, there's the soda sopa above Kenny's house. It's this big thing and and. My wife, her, her family lives lives in, in Mississippi, Bay St. Louis area, and they've got a soda sopa there. And we make fun of that every day because all they're trying to do is make it look like it's rich and ritzy and all that. And all you're doing is you're turning off the majority of the people because the majority, yeah. I don't care about all that fancy stuff. I never right. have. <laughs> you're turning off the, the people that made eBay eBay, and you're only worried about the rich folks that are buddy-buddy with the rich folks running the company. So Right. Well, five day flipper. Thank, thank you very kindly for the ten dollars super chat there. It's greatly and honestly appreciated on on our behalf there. Thank you very kindly. Awesome. I don't know if I probably missed one or not before this. I haven't been paying any attention. No, I didn't see any. I would tell you if it came up. Again, if you haven't hit the thumbs up, I got one hundred and sixty two likes. We got three hundred and twenty four people in house right now. Again, hit that thumbs up for us there. I really appreciate that. A lot of people said they're enjoying the discussion. Well, this. Is we're even preventing people from going on a bathroom break. It's so rude. Oh, jeez. Well, this is this is the fact. I mean, do, do if if every every reseller out there got together and talked about it truthfully and honestly, instead of worrying about their selling courses to newbies, you would see a difference because everybody would be saying the same thing that this needs to go in the other direction. I, I just wish people would be honest with resellers instead of trying to get them to say this is such a great thing. Everybody's doing so awesome. Especially when even resellers out there who are supposed to be these big ones are having days with no sales and all this other crap. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not real. It's not a get get rich quick scheme at all. It's not there. It's not what this is. What I do this for, and I think the majority of people that I personally know who are diehard like me, this is all about freedom. It's not about me being a millionaire or anything else. This is about me using my time how I want to use it. If that means I work 12, 14 hours to get that freedom, I'm fine with that because it's all mine. I make all, all of it. It's all mine. Kelly, I'm gonna end this off because I, I gotta go to uh Yeah, yeah, I know I just realized 10 o'clock. So I've got a I've got a you if you're interested, come check out my uh, estate sale uh, video coming up 10 p.m. So just in a few minutes, tw uh, 20 minutes from now. Um just cut over my channel Primetime Treasure Hunter, and I'll see you there. I'll chat with you live as it uh as it unfolds. But uh Kelly Martin, I was gonna say it too about wearing depends. A funny story. I used to work some of the New Jersey people here I might remember it. It was a little uh uh, it was a, it was basically it was like a oversized convenience store. It was called Cost Cutters, uh, so it was the size of like a I don't know like a Kinney's or like a Rite Aid or something like that. But it wasn't a pharmacy, but it had like those kind of items in there where you could get just about anything. Uh, so there was this uh, elderly guy who came in one day and he he came up to me and I said, "Oh, sir, you know, you know, could I help you? What are you looking for?" And he's like, "Could you tell me where?" I thought he was saying, "Could you tell me where the pens are?" So. I'm like, why are you looking for it? the pen? He's like, yeah, the pen. So I kept bringing them over to the stationery <laughs> and I literally, there's like all these big pens and I'm like, oh, here you go. And I walk away and he looks at me like, a, and he comes back to me and he's like, I'm like, yeah, he's like, oh, I want to know where the pens are. And I'm like, yeah, I brought you to the pens right there. And then his like wife came over. No, he means the pens. He's looking for the pens. I'm like, oh, <laughs> right. Aisles. I was like, oh, my gosh. So I was thinking that every time I 
think of pens and the pens. I always laugh at that. Winter Crow, $5 super chat, Don. Well, thank you very kindly. Thank you very kindly there, Winter Crow. I got to say one story here. You're talking about stories. My wife worked at uh, Vacation Planner at Disney. She sold tickets and package deals and all. And she was talking to somebody. The weather was bad. And um, she made a joke. The guy was talking, but boy, that's really expensive. And they were going back and forth about the price and stuff. And, and my wife was joking around. Yeah, all they want is all your money and an arm and a leg. And as the gentleman stepped a little bit from the window, he only had one arm and one leg. And the conversation oh. <laughs> kind of, luckily, the, the conversation was fun. My wife was joking around and he didn't take it the wrong way. Oh, he thought it was God. funny, but. That's the worst. That's a true story, my wife. Oh, that no. happened to my wife and stuff. Oh, so no. You got to watch what you say sometimes. You, do, you definitely do. But it was a joke, and that would be something normally you'd say that, you know, your firstborn child and, and, yeah. and all the money you got in the world or right. know, an arm and a leg. And, and unfortunately, <laughs> she never said that again after that. But Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, nine, a 9.99 super chat from Lydia Ortiz. Well, thank you very kindly. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. Thank I, I, I I hope to see you over on the uh, on the premiere. Uh, if not, catch the replay later. I know it's getting a little late, so. Um, and I want to thank Don again for being so gracious to have me on his channel uh, again, and um, for being so flexible, especially with anytime as you as you know, as long as I'm available. Now, uh, <laughs> just a couple quick call outs here too. Again, there is a new Patreon video. It's already up uh, for those who had questions on it. I did answer everything as of late last night. I don't think there's much at all there. I think I got most of the emails too this morning. So if there is anything else you need or you had some posted items that you needed help pricing or titles, I did respond to everyone and I did ask for some more questions. So if you get a chance, please go back in there. I can set you up on the price and whatever else you need to know on those things up there too. Another video up tonight or uh, tomorrow too. It's already shot. It's already been edited. And I do again want to personally thank Don for coming on here too. Again, this is our time it's a lot of time invested into this as well, too. And I will let it go from there. I do appreciate everybody. Again, if you haven't hit that thumbs up button, please slam that thumbs up button before you go. And I hope you all have a good evening. Bye, everyone. Take it easy.